to Art with Ian. Today we're going to be talking about taking traditional work, sketches, and finished pieces into the digital platform and what cool things we can do with it from there. So let's get started. All right, so I've got this sketch here that I did. I like to sketch sometimes when I'm like watching Netflix or something. That way I'm not just sitting there doing nothing, uh, but watching TV. Just try to be somewhat productive while I, while I enjoy the TV. And um, sometimes you sketch something and you, it's just literally, you just, that's it. You leave it at that, it's a sketch, whatever. But sometimes you sketch something and you go, man, it would be kind of fun to like do more with this. And that's what we're going to talk about, how you can take a sketch. This, I just, I sketched this in a little sketchbook and I took a picture of it with my phone. And now I've pulled it off my email. And the first issue with this is that when you open it up out of your email, a picture from your phone is just going to be a low resolution image. So if I were to start working on this, just how it came out of my email, I'd be painting at a 72 PPI. So let's, let's look at that adjustment or um, image size. Let's look at this resolution 72. That's a huge problem. We do not want, we do not want to work at 72 PPI. So, how can we deal with that? Well, we just make a new canvas, obviously. So, I'm gonna copy this. And now, when I go to make a new canvas, it's going to automatically recognize my ratio, my size ratio. I'm gonna change it to inches. And I don't like, I don't wanna use this huge size, 50 inches by 38 or whatever, you know? So, I'm just gonna do something. Um, I don't know, let's do like 20, 20 wide by 16 high, and then change the resolution to 300, and hit create. Okay, so now I can paste this, and you'll see it shows up, and I can adjust the size however I want this to fit into my new painting that I'm going to be doing. Um, just kind of something like that. Hit enter to accept that. And then now I have a couple options. One, I could change the exposure on this and use my sketch as my outline and just start painting. So I could go to image adjustments exposure and I could bring the exposure up until it gets pretty light, you know, like the background gets almost white. and hit OK, and then just set this to multiply. And it would basically, the background kind of disappears, and I basically have an outline. It's, there's the image, there's a little bit of overexposure going on here, but it would be enough to get on, like if I was painting, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd know what I was doing, you know, I'd be able to see. Or the other option, what I like to do personally, the other option is just to turn your opacity down like so, create a new layer over the top, get, you know, your favorite sketching brush. I've got, uh, I've got this, this texture sketch brush. I like sketching with this and then just kind of zoom in a little bit, get in however you, whatever zoom you like to work at. I suggest not zooming in too much, but enough to kind of see what you're doing and then just kind of start working in uh, a new sketch. And the reason I like doing this is because you can look at your old ideas, your original ideas, and you can kind of decide to accept or deny those ideas and or develop how you see fit an idea. You could, you know, you're not stuck with what you originally drew. You could be inspired by what you drew, but actually move it forward from there if you want. You know, you could add Let's say you want to add some texture ideas that you didn't think of before or whatnot. And so, yeah, you can just kind of, basically you can just tighten up the sketch and eventually you can get rid of your original drawing and you'll just have your new drawing in the digital platform and you can just, you know, carry on from there. So that's, that's how you could take your sketches and turn them into digital pieces. But don't forget, the most important part is just don't start working at that 72 pixels per inch that you initially will start with. Make a new canvas, 
set it to 300 ppi and then bring your sketch into that so that you're working at a high resolution okay but there's another cool thing you can do what if you have done a drawing that you really like you maybe you've fully rendered it you did all the shading the lighting and all that stuff and you like it but you kind of want to play with it more you want to take it digital you want maybe you want it to be in color you did it in pencil and you want to see how it could be you know turned to color that kind of a thing well what you could do so this is a drawing i did in my toned gray sketchbook and i've i've gone in with the uh, the lasso tool and i have cut away all the background so all i'm left with is the flower and if you apply a gradient map to this showing basically a gradient map attaches itself to the value range that you've created in your in your work so you can basically use a gradient map to get it to something like this i put a pretty high saturation on this i wanted it to be like really high color and from here i could go ahead and just carry on i could create a new layer over the top and i could use whatever brush i want i could zoom in and i can i could leave it as textured and as i want or i can take from i can just use holding down alt i bring up my eyedropper i can take any color i want just i can just take colors straight out of the drawing and i could start going more digital with it i could you know i could render it as i could go as far as i want from here i could do whatever i want basically so how did I get it to this color? Well, we use a gradient map. So I'm going to show you that now using this original one. So up here in uh, image adjustments, you'll see the option gradient map here. And it starts out, it's, you know, don't be alarmed. It starts out looking, generally looking bad. Um, but you click on that and now what this how this is set up is that on the left is whatever color you put on this far left is going to be dictate what you see in your deepest values your darkest values and whatever you color you put here on the farthest right is going to dictate what you see in your lightest values so starting here at the at my shadows i want to create a temperature shift from cool to warm from the shadows into the lights so i'm gonna go kind of like a coolish purpley pink. I'm going to come down here and get pretty dark and pretty saturated. Not, I don't want it to look dull. So, and all of these can be adjusted that, so, you know, you don't spend too terribly long on each one. So I'm going to just accept that. And then by clicking down below here, anywhere you click, you can create a new section. So I want to create a new section here and I'm going to change that color to slightly warmer and brighter. That's probably okay. Say okay, create a new section. And you can drag these if you click on them. Once you set them up, you can drag them around and it will shift the point of uh, it'll, it'll shift how the gradation is functioning so i'm going to set this one up to be that slight slight bit pinker brighter somewhere in there seems fine then one more this time i'm going to go i think i'm going to spread these out just a little bit this time I'm going to actually go all the way down to, you know, I'm going to really warm it up. I'm going to come up here somewhere in here. Maybe a little more. And now I'm going to bring one in that is actual light. So like kind of similar to sunlight. And so what we've essentially accomplished here is kind of going from a cool, dark t uh, tone for the values up into getting warmer and warmer into the lights. And so we can accept that, say okay, accept that. But we're not stuck here. We're not, we don't have to leave it exactly like this. We can come up here to 
image adjustments, hue saturation, and you can you can mess with the saturation levels. You can mess with the hue, you know, the color. But I kind of like the color anyway. And you can mess with the lightness or darkness of it. But I'm basically just going to bring a tiny bit of saturation up into it. Say okay. And then obviously we don't want a stem that is pink. That makes it doesn't feel like we actually went to the, you know, we colored this properly. So I'm just going to use the lasso tool to select that and come up into image adjustments, hue saturation, and I'm going to find like a green and take the saturation down on it a little bit and the brightness down on it a little bit. Say OK. And then Control D to deselect that, that selection. And so basically, we now have what looks like something that was colored on purpose. Um, and obviously, that was extremely painless to go from a gray drawing to color. I mean, that, that was minutes. And you don't, you don't have to be, you're not stuck here. Like, you can, you can just paint whatever you want going on going forward from here. Like I said, I mean, you could completely paint in a digital layer over the top, or you could add, let's say I wanted to add some like cool light in the shadows, like a uh, ambient light or something. I could uh, just come in and do that. Like, you know, get in there and, and paint like um, rim light type of stuff. You, you can do whatever you want, basically, from here. Because now, now it's digital. You've brought it into digital, so you, you, you have all the freedom that digital, the digital platform provides to you. Let's say I wanted to get some, some blue in my droplets or something like that. Or what if I wanted it to get super hot in my lights and have it feel a little less like gritty, like the pencil... One thing that the gradient maps does is it kind of harshens your your work a little bit, the texture of it. So if you just wanted to go in there and and smooth things back a little bit, you could do that. Reinforce some of my my highlights, you know, things like that. Just general cleanup, whatever. Or you could leave it as is because you like the texture of the drawing and that was the whole point of doing this in the first place kind of thing. It's really up to you however you want to go with Or I could create a new layer and set it to color dodge and go and get like a really warm, bright color and grab an airbrush, zoom out. And I could just push some, you know, you could just push some, like, the, the hotness of a couple areas. You know, just really make it uh, super hot in these spots. Just, even if you wanted to just do, like, that kind of a, uh, treatment, you know. So, yeah. Anyways, it's super cool being able to bring traditional art into the digital platform and, and play with it further you're not kind of stuck with whatever it was when you first drew it and it's it's kind of nice to know like if you're sitting around watching tv you could be in your sketchbook doodling and later on take that idea and really develop it f uh, further from where you were just you know just practicing it originally or whatever so anyways yeah explore this uh have fun taking your traditional work and making it digital and see where you can go with it. And um, I really hope you got something out of this. I hope you enjoy playing around with it. It's a really fun way to take your traditional work and turn it digital and kind of carry on working with it from there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Make sure you ring that bell for notifications of future videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.